Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Manitoba Agriculture Museum Seniors Day. gentlemen we'd like to uh, just have a little bit of a presentation if you want to uh, turn your attention here the Chamber of Commerce along uh, is organizing a Manitoba 150 celebration next year that's June the 12th 13th and 14th and uh, I'd like to call upon Chad right now to introduce the Manitoba 150 good evening ladies and gentlemen on behalf of the Boston Area Chamber, I'd just like to thank everyone for uh, showing up tonight. Change hats, and on behalf of the Lions, I'd also like to thank you for your support at the booth. So, as uh, Ed alluded to, we have the Manitoba 150 coming up next year, June 12, 13, 14th. Uh, is it going to be as big as Canada 150? No, but uh, we are planning a steak supper with Hicktown, uh, so we'll do the street dance again. We'll have a carnival. We're going to have another uh, play production by Kelvin and his crew. And then we're going to have a concert on the Sunday night. So it's so the carnival on, will be on Saturday. It's going to be here on the grounds. And we're hoping to get a few more folks interested in participating in like an old time carnival event. That'll be where the uh, organizations can kind of make their money. So uh, last, at the Canada 150, we brought in just over $45,000 in revenue to the to the various community organizations. So uh, we really want to try and support our local guys and make things happen. So I'd like to call on Kelvin to tell us a little bit about the, uh, the play production. Trouble in Red River. Donald Smith, longtime Hudson Bay employee, sent from Ottawa to speak to rebels. The tension of rebellion threatened to explode into full-blown war at any moment. Yet through this turmoil, Louis Riel and the Métis people brought a new province into the Canadian Federation, Confederation. However, without rights to its own natural resources, could this new province survive? Without access to the railway, would it be possible for anyone to create a life on the harsh prairie? As if the struggle of setting up a homestead wasn't enough, Alvin and Louise also had to deal with the challenge of raising a growing family. And believe me, it was a challenge. Their children, Sean and Peter, were brothers in name, but rivals in just about everything else. Just when it seemed that these two young men would finally be able to find peace with each other, Sydney beautiful young woman, caught the eye of them both and unleashed another round of conflict. Could people so opposite ever learn to work together for a common goal? Would a province with so little ever be able to fulfill the grand vision of its founders? Join us as we take a look back at where we came from. Through the eyes of a young family coming of age, we will experience the coming of the Trans-Canada Railway, the taming of the Canadian West, and the birth of Manitoba as we know it today. This play is called Our Manitoba and it travels 150 years of history of our province with a sense of humor, heart, and ultimately hope. What you just heard is the rundown of the story of our upcoming play called Our Manitoba. A few of you may remember the show called Our Town Austin that was performed here in town a few years ago as part of Canada 150. This play is a follow-up to that, and the show is set to be performed on the stage that I'm standing on right now. The plan is for it to be a kickoff to, to a weekend of celebration of uh, celebrating this great province we live in. And the good news is, is if you would like to participate in this upcoming production, there are parts available to suit all ages 
and all skill levels. If you'd rather work behind the scenes, or if you have a story that I should be sure to include in the script, you can participate in that way as well. Just, uh, I can write a script, but without a good cast and a crew to make things happen, those words will just stay there on the paper. So if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or if you're ready to sign up now for the, for the play, uh, please come and see me after, after the ribbon cutting. Thank you. And I will call on Ed. Yeah, so that play production will be happening Friday night, the carnival on Saturday, and then on Sunday night, uh, there will be a, a concert here, right in the, the fairgrounds here, on uh, the sports grounds, uh, with, uh, by Tommy Brandt, who has some industry awards. He was the 2013 ICM May Vocalist, 2016 Entertainer of the Year. He's an award-winning Christian country music artist, and, uh, and I'll be playing you some sample of his music a little later on. And uh, there will also be some local feature talent that will be coming in uh, as the opening act for that concert. Uh, so again, like, just like Calvin says, if you would like to participate in any of these three events or help with that concert, we need different people, uh, contact any one of us. At this time, uh, the Chamber of Commerce has had an de economic development plan going in place. But some interesting developments has taken place, and I'd like to call Chad right now to make an announcement. Thank you, Ed. So, uh, we had a, we've been having these economic development meetings over the last uh, few months. Uh, we had uh, stakeholders meetings. We had uh, where about 30 people were there, and then we had uh, the community come and uh, voice their opinion. Uh, lots has come out of that. Uh, one thing that uh, was discussed was a, a need for a hotel for this area. And uh, we just kind of laughed and said, well, that'll be interesting. There's been a lot of rumors going around, and we just want to confirm a few things. Uh, we are in discussions with a developer. Uh, there has been land. Uh, there, there are some land options uh, being looked at. But uh, the rumors are true. There's a very good possibility of a 30-room hotel coming to Austin. Uh, this would be roughly a, a $5 million project with a plan to use a lot of, uh, a lot of our tradespeople here because we are very fortunate to have so many trades here. Um, this, this developer has built a hotel, has about 35 hotels across the province. He's looking, they're looking at one at Carmen as well and another one in Niverville. Um, and then they span to rivers and then off, uh, off to the west. So uh, that rumor is true and the chamber just wanted to uh, kind of stand behind it and say yes we are working very hard at trying to get a hotel here. Um, we're very very close uh, when it comes to the investment. We need uh, approximately two million dollars and we feel we're at least three quarters of the way there now. So uh, our goal is rather optimistic but we'd like to see the shovel in the ground for next April with uh, an opening the following May. So uh, pretty exciting times here, but uh, we did want to confirm that and uh, if anyone has any questions feel free to talk to Ed or myself. If you want to hear more information about that, please contact us and we'll get you in, in discussions with the developer um, and uh, we'll go from there. So call on Ed again to for a few more things. Thank you Chad. And actually that's pretty exciting. I think uh, we can have a economic development here. As some of you may know, uh, or you're wondering, what is this stage about? And uh, this stage uh, began in a, as a dream of mine a number of years ago. And in the meantime, I got a hold of Kelvin and we talked about this. And Kelvin does play productions and he can use a stage like this. And, uh, and so as a result, we, me and Kelvin together established a mobile stage company. Uh, we set up an association called that, and we're basically dreams come alive. And um, what we did, we established a purpose and a mission and a plan. And just to get you a little bit of a picture of it, this is to facilitate the communication of joy and celebration of life in a community setting. 
And to do that, we provide a quality mobile stage on wheels that's easy transportable and easy to set up and take down to make this facility available to primarily the people and organizations of the community of Austin and area. So if your organization could use a stage like this as a presentation, uh, you're welcome to contact us. We want it to be a focus point for the community. And um, so the plan is to design this stage, to fund it, and to promote production of events for the betterment of community spirit. If you'd like to read the whole thing, I have a number of these pamphlets available right here, or brochures. I'd like to just give a little recognition. Squirrel Creek Trailers did most of the building on this stage. Prairie Hills Machine uh, is doing some of the fine work and there's still more work to be done. And then some local people also contributed some uh, cash. And Southman Printing d gave us the sound system. And uh, so we're thankful for everybody who donated towards that. And so at this time, I basically wanted to do a ribbon cutting ceremony just to kick off this stage, just as uh, a kind of a celebration of achievement, even though the stage isn't, isn't totally finished. And so it, uh, if you also notice the banner in the front here, it says, we may be small, but we dream big. The grade six class about just before Canada 150 came up with a slogan. And actually I've been thinking about this and it's kind of cool. We may be small, but we dream big. And I was thinking of us, our own lives sometimes. You maybe feel small, but you can dream big. You maybe feel insignificant in this community sometimes, but this community needs you. This community needs you strong. This need, community needs you healthy. This community needs you full of energy. Because you can dream big. You are not insignificant. All things are possible. And when we take that mindset, a lot of things can happen in our community. So the challenge here, we want to inspire you. What's your dream for the community? I just had a small one here. We got together. Let's see what happens. We don't know where it's all going to go. But we want to have fun and celebrate life. And so if you have a dream, go for it. At this time, I'd like to call upon uh, Aline Clark, the candidate for uh, uh, MLA for Agassiz, and just for a few words. And Bill, would you like to come up as well? Well, good evening, everybody, and it's such a pleasure to be here because uh, Austin is certainly uh, a community that's making itself known the last few years. And uh, I'll just be very clear, I'm not your MLA right now. I am just a candidate for the upcoming election on September 10th. But I'm uh, really pleased to have witnessed uh, so much that's gone on in Austin in the area. And I do have to recognize Ed and Chad and certainly... Kelvin. Kelvin's kind of spread himself amongst many communities, but uh, in his very own quiet way, he really makes his presence known by the, the work that he does and what he gives of himself to the, our community. So thank you, Kelvin. But also to Ed and Chad, I was at one of those economic development meetings, and I was overwhelmed by the number of people that were there. I've been involved in Chamber of Commerce for more than 40 years, and uh, not just locally, but provincially. And it's really, really difficult to get people to participate, people to volunteer, but the 150th, a couple of years ago, really showed what Austin community is all about, and it was amazing. And I have bragged about it every day since, everywhere I go, using Austin as an example. But what, it's about the people, because none of this would happen without all of you. And it's like they said, it takes, it takes a whole community to make things happen. So I'm really excited about 150th next year, certainly for Austin, for, certainly for this constituency. And um, Manitoba, our government itself, has a very large committee working. Uh, it should be a fantastic year. There's a lot of uh, different projects and there's a lot of different events planned. And I think, again, you say this would be a much smaller event. It's not always about the size, it's about the quality. And Austin produces quality. So <laughs> congratulations for what you've done. Good luck for what you're planning on doing for sure. Your slogan is so right about small communities. I was in Kelwood this morning um, on the opposite end of this constituency. Same thing, a small community, but the 
what happens is amazing. They've got what they call the barn there. It, it was a dream of their community, just like everything that's going on here. A group of them got together and they did not quit. They have a brand new um, gas bar, sea store, and they're planning a whole bunch more. It's got a little restaurant in it and it's called The Barn. If you're traveling down number five highway, that community is so outstanding proud of what they've accomplished and they should be, but Austin should be as well because you are really, I can't wait to see that hotel. It will happen. There is no doubt in my mind that it will happen and I can't wait for the opening of that. So congratulations to all of you for your hard work and your dedication and don't quit because the sky's the limit. Thanks so much. And I will say I am campaigning 24 seven. So please vote on September 10th. Every single vote matters to me and it matters to our government. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ali. I asked Bill if he would uh, do the ribbon cutting for this. And uh, Bill, would you have a few words before we do this? Okay, um, <laughs> Kelvin, if you want to come up. And Chad, grab that in, give the other one to Kelvin. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, the ribbon cutting for the stage, the mobile stage company. Go ahead, Bill.